Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, the season for colds is just about over. But our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, managed to have one that hung on all last week. The cold didn't bother me as much as the fact that it put me a full week behind in the pursuit of my favorite extracurricular activity, a biology teacher named Philip Boynton. (laughs) For while I was steaming myself with an inhalator, Mr. Boynton was being steamed by another female English teacher, one Daisy Enright. And as far as I'm concerned, one Daisy Enright is one too many. (laughs) But by last Friday morning, the cold at least was licked. And as I sat down to breakfast with my landlady, she complimented me on my appearance. You look fine, Connie, the picture of health. You really have the bloom of youth in your cheeks. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Davis. I feel a lot better. But these rosy cheeks aren't all the bloom of youth. There's just too much starch in the face towels. <laughs> Sorry, dear. I'll limpen them out a bit. Yes, they could use a little limpening. <laughs> now go ahead and drink your juice, dear. We can talk later. What kind of juice is this, Mrs. Davis? It's a combination. I take the juice of an orange, some lemons, and a grapefruit, and then I whip them all together. But this color, why is it so red? I guess maybe I whipped them too hard. (laughs) No, no, I know what it is. This morning I added some tomato juice. Tomato juice? I figured I might as well use it up. There wasn't enough to pour on my farina anyway. (laughs) It's very healthy, Connie. Now go ahead, get it down. That isn't the big trick. Which reminds me, have you planned dinner for tonight? Not yet, Connie. Good, I wonder if you'd do me a big favor. I'd like to, Connie, but I'm rather short this week myself. And I... uh, it isn't money this time. I just thought it'd be nice if you went over to your sister Angela's house for dinner. You see, Mr. Boynton has invited me to a barbecue. He has? Where, Connie? Here in our backyard. <laughs> he knows we've got a portable barbecue wagon, but in return for the use of our grounds and equipment, he's consented to let me furnish the food also. <laughs> How very generous of him But I suppose you want me to visit my sister So that you can be alone with Mr. Boynton You've guessed my secret, Mrs. Davis I haven't had one date with him all week long And he's seen Miss Enright three times Well, she's nothing to worry about, Connie My goodness, no normal man would look at her cross-eyed And believe me, that's the best way to look at her (laughs) But you know, Mrs. Davis, she's insidious. She has a way of clinging to a man like a piece of lint. Well, I'm sure Mr. Boynton will brush her off when he spent the evening alone with you, Connie. (laughs) I'll call Angela on the phone and tell her I'm coming over tonight. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Davis. I knew you'd come through for me. By the way, uh, how did you make this date with Mr. Boynton? Last night. He called just after midnight. Oh, isn't that rather late for him? Oh, he apologized for calling at such an hour, but... He had taken Miss Enright to a movie, and after he took her home, he felt awfully restless. Just couldn't sleep, he said. (laughs) What movie did they see? Vaughn Monroe in Singing Guns. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Boynton said the picture was fine, but every time he dozed off, the guns stopped singing and Vaughn Monroe started. (laughs) Well, let's hope tonight is the start of a new Mr. Boynton. Uh, Romantically speaking, that is. Mm -hmm. With the two of you alone in the backyard, sitting under the moon, who knows what primitive instincts may stir in him. Perhaps you're right. I remember last year about this time, we were sitting in the yard and the moon was very full. Yes, Connie. The stars were out too, millions of them. And as a soft breeze rippled through my hair, Mr. Boynton turned and looked right into my face. And what did he say, Connie? He said, isn't this a keen night for trapping gophers? Here's some mail you forgot to bring from home, Daddy. I thought you might want to read it before school starts. Uh, Thank you, Harriet. Just put it on my desk. 
right behind the little neon sign that says Osgood Conklin Principal. <laughs> okay. Oh, Daddy, before I forget, how about inviting Miss Brooks over for dinner tonight? What? Me invite Miss Brooks to our home for dinner? Yes, Daddy, I think it would be sweet. After all, she hasn't been too well during the past week, and you've been rather severe with her. I've been severe with her? Do you realize that in the past week she has twice dropped a typewriter on my left foot, <laughs> broken my glasses, and spilled ink all over my newest tie? But those were all accidents, Daddy. By inviting her over, it would show that you forgave her. Besides, Mother says we owe Miss Brooks a dinner since last Thanksgiving. That's nothing to be thankful for. <laughs> Mother's making codfish balls tonight, and I thought... Codfish that... balls? Again? <laughs> yes, Daddy. I've asked Walter Denton to come, but Mother always makes plenty uh, so... Just the... a minute, Harriet. You say we owe Miss Brooks a dinner? That's right. Well, this might be the perfect night to get it over with. Between the codfish balls and that lame-brained dunce Walter Denton, it's a wasted night anyhow. Yes, Harriet, I'll invite your Miss Brooks to dinner. Thanks, Daddy. But I wish you didn't feel that Don't way Don't about... mention his name again. <laughs> now, tell me, has Miss Brooks arrived at school yet? That's a timely question, Daddy. She's just coming up the walk. I can see her through your window. Good, good. Now you run along, child. I'll attend to everything. All right, Daddy. See you during lunch period. Codfish balls. Now, let's see. I have to meet Miss Brooks in the corridor accidentally. Don't want her to think I'm running after her. She should be coming in the front door about now. That's approximately eight paces to my door. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, now. Good morning, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Forgive me for screaming. I, I thought you were leaping at my throat. <laughs> what an odd notion. Yes, well, let's not dwell on it. <laughs> Will you step into my office for a moment, please? Yes, sir. Uh, now, uh, sit down, Miss Brooks. As you know, I'm not much given to fraternization with faculty members. However, my daughter Harriet and my dear wife have put the heat on me to see... Uh, they've suggested... <laughs> ...that I invite you over for dinner tonight. Oh, how charming. But I'm afraid I couldn't make it tonight, Mr. Conklin. We're having codfish balls. That isn't my reason for refusing. <laughs> but I've planned a barbecue for tonight. This May weather is so lovely. A barbecue... Mm. What are you going to barbecue? Miss Enright. I mean... <laughs> uh, spare ribs, probably. Barbecued spare ribs. With plenty of savory hot sauce. And potato salad. And those wonderful juicy frankfurters. Smeared with mustard. <laughs> and sweet corn. Dripping with butter and salt. <laughs> and homemade biscuits. Loaded with honey. And a tossed green salad. Yes, sir. Now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Conklin. Uh, where are you going? To the infirmary. I've made a pig of myself. <laughs> it was very nice of you to ask me over, Mr. Conklin, but if it's all the same to you, may I have a rain check? Indeed you may, Miss Brooks. I shall invite you to my outdoor barbecue the very next time it rains. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Boynton, but I'd like to talk to you for a moment before your first class. Oh, come in, Miss Brooks. I was just grooming one of my guinea pigs. Had to cut his nails and comb his hair. Why don't you just let his nails grow? Then he could comb his own hair. <laughs> I just stopped in to confirm our date for tonight. The backyard is all ours. Tonight? Don't you mean tomorrow night, Miss Brooks? Well, no. When you spoke to me on the phone last night, you said tomorrow night, which means tonight. Oh, but I've got an tentative appointment with Miss Enright for tonight. You see, it was after midnight when I called you last night, and I was thinking of it as being today. So when I said tomorrow night, I meant tomorrow night from today, not tonight. <laughs> Put a zither behind that, and you could open at Grauman's Chinese. <laughs> Look, Mr. Barton, just between you and me and Miss Enright, don't you think you've been seeing enough of the lamppost lately? I mean... <laughs> You know what I mean. 
Well, if you mean I've been seeing Miss Enright too much, it hasn't been my idea at all. It started when you and I had a date last Tuesday night. Miss Enright came to me Monday and told me I might as well forget about it. She said she had an idea you were going to catch a cold. She had an idea I was going to catch a cold? Well, she mentioned something about transferring a student to your class who had a very bad cold. How do you like that germ warfare? <laughs> Well, you just have to postpone, Miss Enright, I'm afraid. I- I've made all arrangements to hold our barbecue tonight. Well, it, it isn't the gentlemanly thing to do, but if you insist, I'll put her off. I insist. Shove her off. <laughs> what time can I expect you, Mr. Barton? Well, it doesn't do to start too early. Uh, that is to say, it's more fun when it's dark out. Now you're talking. <laughs> The fire looks so much prettier at night. I I love cooking out of doors. I used to be a Boy Scout, you know. What do you mean, used to be? (laughs) You're right, you're right at that. I'm still a Scout Master. But as I was saying, once I get my fire started... That'll be the day. Sorry, Mr. Boynton. Please continue. Well, I, I cook my ribs first, and then I... <laughs> then, then I cook my frankfurters, and after eating... After eating, I just like to sit around in the moonlight with something in my arms I really care for. Oh, you're cooking with more than charcoal. <laughs> uh, but what, may I ask, is there something in your arms that you really care for? Or my ukulele, of course. <laughs> of course. The better to slug the gophers with, my dear. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Now, tests published in authoritative dental literature show that when teeth are brushed right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. Two years' research at five leading universities, hundreds of case histories, shows that when used as directed, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. Yes, exhaustive tests show the Colgate way best to prevent decay, better than any other home method of oral hygiene known today. Based on both clinical and x-ray examinations, The Colgate Way stopped more decay for more people than ever before reported in all dentifrice history. Even more important, there were no new cavities whatever for more than one out of three who used Colgate Dental Cream as directed. Think of it, not even one new cavity in two full years. No other dentifrice, paste or powder, ammoniated or not. No other dentifrice has proof of such results. The best results ever reported for a dentifrice of any type. So always use Colgate to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And remember, when you follow the Colgate way, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. Well, when lunch period arrived, Mr. Boynton had to stay in his lab and groom some more guinea pigs. So I headed for the school cafeteria by myself. It was pretty crowded when I got there. But fortunately, Walter Denton had saved a place for me at a corner table. I set my tray on it and sat down. There we are. Very nice of you to keep this place for me, Walter. Glad to have incurred your pleasure, old Cleveland. I count the day well spent during which, by some slight act of thoughtfulness... Oh, thanks very much. Yes, in fact, my cup of joy is running over... Walter, quick, get a napkin. Oh, what happened? Your cup of joy was joined by my cup of soup. (laughs) <laughs> Luckily, I got out of the way in time. Oh, here, I'll mop up the table. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. I guess the spring weather's making me more poetic than usual. And besides, my romantic affairs have taken a rather surprising turn. Good for you, Walter. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to eat what's left of this soup. Now, go right ahead, Miss Brooks. But while you do, I've got a problem to thrash out. I simply cannot understand Mr. Conklin. Give that boy a brand new Hudson. <laughs> He's an enigma, Miss Brooks. You take the night before last, for instance. I was sitting on the porch of his house with his daughter, Harriet. About ten o'clock, he came out for a smoke and caught me holding her hand. What did he do? 
Well, all I can say is, I wish I'd been holding his foot instead of her hand. <laughs> yeah, he almost kicked me down the porch steps. Almost. Fortunately, I dove over the side. <laughs> but uh, today, Harriet invited me over for dinner. Well, that's no problem. Take your diving helmet and go. You know, I never could understand Mr. Conklin's antipathy towards me, but today he didn't seem so bad. In fact, when I met him in the hall and told him I was having dinner at his home, he was practically civil to me. Hmm. And I... Oh, but here I am babbling about me, and I haven't even asked about your recent ailment. Are you all over your cold? Yes, Walter, I am. Oh, good. Colds can lead into dangerous things. Oh, I know. Laryngitis, bronchial trouble, Miss Enright. <laughs> oh, no, I get it. While you were sick, she had a couple of dates with Mr. Boynton, huh? She had three, but who counts? <laughs> Don't get me wrong, <laughs> Miss Enright's a very fine English teacher, and as a fellow faculty member, she's entitled to go out with whomever she pleases. It's none of my business. Until she goes from English to biology. Now, Walter. No, I don't blame you for getting annoyed, Miss Brooks. Miss Enright's pretty corny when the way she flirts. Well, now that you mentioned it, I can only say she's about as square as they come. The device she employed yesterday proves that. What device? When she saw Mr. Boynton leaving school, she dropped her handkerchief. No kidding. But why should that get you so sore, Miss Brooks? It landed right on top of mine. <laughs> what am I saying? Let's finish lunch, Walter. Yeah, if it wasn't for Mr. Boynton, I guess you and Miss Enright would get along a lot better. She really likes you a lot. I can tell by the way she talks about you. Why, only this morning she said something very complimentary about your hair. Miss Enright did? Yes, ma'am. She said you've got the loveliest blonde hair she ever saw on a brunette. Oh, <laughs> uh, she did. Yeah. And then she said her hair was absolutely natural. That's very true, Walter. It's one of the most natural wigs I've ever seen. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry if I sound bitter, but I guess I'll snap out of it after tonight. Oh, you got a date with Mr. Boynton? Yes, Walter. We're having a barbecue in my backyard. You know, spare ribs and romance, moonlight and mustard. Oh, that sounds dynamic. Uh-oh, look who's headed this way. Oh, the cafeteria certainly is packed today. Oh, hello, Walter. Hi, Miss Enright. Do you mind if I sit here with you and your mother? <laughs> His mother? Oh! It's you, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Forgive me for taking you for Walter's mother, darling. My eyes must be playing tricks on me. I guess it's still too light out for you. <laughs> Pull up a sturdy chair and sit down, Miss Enright. Thanks. You're a dear. You're an antelope, but sit down, Enright. <laughs> oh, dear, I forgot to bring my coffee along. Uh, would you go get me a cup, Walter? Okay, Miss Enright. How do you want it? Cream and sugar? No, just sugar, please. Never mind that either, Walter. I've got some lumps for her right here. <laughs> I took some extra cubes, Miss Enright. Oh, how thoughtful. But then you always were considerate of others. Take this past week, for example. You didn't interfere at all while Mr. Boynton was dating me. Nobody knows better than you do, Miss Enright, that I was home every night with a cold. Well, that shouldn't depress you, dear. At least it proves there's something you can catch. <laughs> felt a bit guilty about taking advantage of your indisposition, but after all, you were cooped up in that stuffy little room of yours, and Mr. Boynton does love the great outdoors, and I am the outdoor type. I'll say you are. Nobody ever invites you in. <laughs> Look, Miss Enright, my cold is better now, and I think it only fair to warn you that Mr. Boynton and I are going to take up our relationship exactly where we left it. Oh, poor Mr. Boynton. And to think for five whole days he hasn't had to wear his track shoes. <laughs> Tell me, dear, has he granted you an evening in the foreseeable future? In the very foreseeable future, Miss Enright. In fact, before I leave you to your black coffee and thoughts to match, there's something I think you should know. Mr. Boynton's coming to a barbecue tonight in my backyard. How wonderful for him. He'll need all the fresh air he can get. <laughs> that is, he does seem to enjoy himself in the open spaces. Take the evenings he spends in my backyard. We dine under the stars. Then Mr. Boynton strums his ukulele, and I sit in the hammock and sing. In the hammock? 
That's very unnatural. Unnatural? When you sing, you should be sitting on a fence. <laughs> Gosh, I thought school would never end today. You want me to take you home? We might as well spend the afternoon there if we're going to have dinner with your folks. I'm afraid that's all off, Walter. There isn't anything to eat at our house. What? It seems Daddy went home for lunch, and Mother asked him to fix the vacuum cleaner. Well, he fixed it all right, only he did it in the kitchen. I don't quite follow you, my sweet. <laughs> Mother had everything for dinner laid out on top of the stove, and before Daddy knew it was fixed... The vacuum sucked up all the codfish balls. <laughs> Are you sure that was an accident? Who can tell? Daddy never was very fond of codfish. But Mother was so upset, she just picked up and went over to Grandmother's for the rest of the day. We're on our own as far as dinner's concerned. Gee, that's too bad, Harriet. I... Wait a minute. If I can't be your guest tonight, how would you like to be mine? Walter, that sounds just like a proposal. What does? Oh, how would you like to be mine? No, I meant, how would you like to be mine for dinner? <laughs> but you understand, my guest for dinner, I meant. But, Walter, you can't afford to take me to a restaurant. Oh, you're very right, lovely one. But I won't have to take you to a restaurant. I'll take you to a dandy, free, outdoor barbecue. <laughs> Where? At Miss Brooks' place. She's having Mr. Boynton over for dinner. But won't they want to be alone? Well, she'll want to be alone, but you know how bashful he is. As soon as he's in the presence of a member of the opposite sex, he just dummies up. Now, we'll be doing Miss Brooks a favor to go. Oh, don't you see, Harriet? We'll save her hours of groundwork trying to warm him up. But we haven't been invited, Walter. <laughs> What's that got to do with anything? Look, we'll only stay until we've got the ball rolling. We'll leave as soon as Mr. Boynton is nice and relaxed. And we're full of ribs and frankfurters. Well, I've got the charcoal all laid out and burning. I set the barbecue up right under that big tree. Oh, it's a nice night for a barbecue, isn't it? It's a nice night for anything. <laughs> you know, Miss Brooks, seeing you here so close with... The shadows playing softly about your face, the moon shining on your hair as the firelight dances in your eyes. You'd be amazed at the thought that occurs to me. No, I wouldn't. Where are the gopher traps? <laughs> now, now you're teasing me, Miss Brooks. I haven't seen you all week, and I want you to know that... that... Yes, Mr. Boynton? That I brought along a quart of oil with me. <laughs> that seems like enough. Oil. It's a special brand for, for making the charcoal burn, burn faster. Well, what will they think of next? <laughs> but uh, before the oil, Mr. Boynton, you were saying... Well, I, I was saying that, that it's nice to be alone here, just you and I. Oh, it certainly is, Mr. Boynton. And we're really alone here. There's no way in or out of this yard except through that big wooden door in the fence. Which wooden door? That one. <laughs> Excuse me a minute, Mr. Boynton. No, okay. I'll go put some ribs and franks on the grill. I can't imagine who this is. Hi, Miss Brooks. It's me. That's obvious. <laughs> well, what do you want, Walter? Uh, I thought you were dining with the Conklins. We couldn't. Their vacuum cleaner sucked up the codfish balls. <laughs> so I took the liberty of dropping in on you for some sustenance. Well, here's a quarter. Sustain yourself at the drugstore. Hey, Miss Brooks, I can't leave until my guest arrives. Your guest? Sure. I invited Harriet along. She's just checking with her dad. She'll be here any minute. Oh, fine. Oh, we just thought we'd get the party warmed up for you, Miss Brooks. You know, Mr. Boynton. For your information, Walter, before you knocked on that door, Mr. Boynton was coming to a slow boil. <laughs> Oh, hello, Walter. Glad to see you. Oh, same here, Mr. B. Nothing like a few friendly faces to help a tay to tay along, eh, what? Oh, quiet. <laughs> oh, that must be Harriet. I'll open it. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry I'm late. 
That's all right. We played games till you got here. <laughs> Come on in, Harriet. I'll go put some more ribs and stuff on the grill. Thanks, Mr. Boynton. Gee, this backyard of yours is adorable, Miss Brooks. Just a perfect setting for outdoor dining. Daddy will get a big boot out of it. Yes, I'm sure that... Who will get a boot? <laughs> Daddy! He didn't want to horn in, but when I told him how Walter and I were just planning to enhance your evening with Mr. Boynton, he consented to come. Your father is coming here tonight? That sounds like Daddy now. What can I put against that door? <laughs> I'll get it, Miss Brooks. Good evening, Denton. Harriet. Welcome aboard, Mr. Conklin. Greetings, Daddy. Nice of you to ask me over, Miss Brooks. Did I? <laughs> Come in, Mr. Conklin. Oh, uh, in a moment. I took the liberty of bringing somebody with me. It gave me a lift over here, as a matter of fact. She's just parking the car. Charming person. But, Mr. Conklin, who? Who? Who else but me, darling? <laughs> Miss Enright. Miss Enright. <laughs> Stand around the door. Let's go over by the barbecue. And dear Mr. Boynton. You, Mr. Boynton. Why, it's Miss Enright. Good evening, Mr. Boynton. Well, we're all here now, aren't we? You're all here. But Mr. Boynton and I are having dinner someplace else. Someplace else? But where, Miss Brooks? Where we can be alone, in the Conklin's vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Barden returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid, Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight... Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream Shampoo. And now, once again, here is Eve Arden. Opportunity is an American word. To Americans, it has special meanings, like education for everyone. And the college education of one-tenth of the country's population depends on the private, accredited colleges and universities that are training the majority of the nation's Negro youth. Today, the United Negro College Fund appeals to you for help. Your gift to the United Negro College Fund is your contribution to community progress and interracial goodwill. Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, Joe Quillen, and Lester White, with the music of Wilbur Hatch under the direction of Maurice Carlton. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Mary Jane Croft. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,285 different women that palm olive soap facials using nothing but palm olive brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap. Each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. 
For a mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.